I heard about these giant bean bags. I'm like, I, I want one. So I walk into the Love Stacks, Love Stacks store where? In Sherman Oaks? Sherman Oaks. Sherman Oaks. I'm like, hey, I do Vine's social media presence. Like, you mind hitting, uh, contact, hitting me up or you mind linking me with the, uh, marketing, the, market, the marketing guy? Let's get a text from a dude named Mike. He's like, yo, you, what, do you have any ideas? I was like, yeah, I, I kind of don't want to pay for this, this, this Love Sack. Is there anything we can do? And he's like, yeah, sure, we can work on it. Super amicable, friendly, charismatic guy. I've told the story a thousand times. Got my love sack, set him up. I was like, bro, these are great. Can you fuck on him? Because you were being friendly and fun and like a bro. He goes, as a matter of fact, you can. Logan, <laughs> the cover's are machine washable, so come wherever you like. I was like, this guy's great. And then the way our friendship developed is... Uh, it's one for the books. That's a whole nother it's podcast. It's one for the books, bro. It's, is it Lady, in the book? The whole thing, bro. <laughs> Listen, we, we became really good friends over text at first, and then, yeah, we could do a whole show on this. And By the way, you, you fuckers going to read this before I do. He doesn't have one actual copy, copy of the book. And this is just a mock-up <laughs> copy. But we, uh, first time we met in, in real life, Travis Strana's house, put yeah. together this, this amazing uh, 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 deal where he actually... It's so funny how these one these days are just tiny blips in the story. Like he shot a love sack out of a massive room size slingshot yeah. and tried to knock Travis Pastrana out of the sky as he jumped off a large ramp on a motocross yeah. bike while Roman Atwood recorded. Yeah. What the fuck did I just say? What the fuck did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen? And, and I met you for the first time. You came down the driveway and you're like, Mike! And I turned around and I said, yo, and j just like that, bro. So uh, when I'm going to fast, history. I'm going to fast forward a yeah. little bit, yeah. uh, because when you really became a part of this shit, and by the way, I'm so sorry for bringing you onto bro, this. <laughs> best thing that ever happened, bro. Was after Tokyo. Yeah. Whole chapter about that. Yep. So, um, we have been friends for a while and I, I saw the thing too. In you, I just wasn't sure where where to uh, devote that energy, and you 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 had always cared about me and my well being and my career, and um, I don't know if I want to read the excerpt because uh, it even for me brings up some uh, some some demons and feelings that make me a little un uncomfortable. I read it before the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm yeah. <laughs> this yeah, hits, no, it just hits a little too close to home for me to read. Yeah, for sure. But uh, why? Why did you? Why did you come into my life and help me? <laughs> why? Why did you leave your? I make jokes about this all the time. Even I wrote that thing. I want to read it. Which one? My my. Uh, oh, your letter for the book. Yes, find it right now. I'll I'll, I'll give you some somewhat of an answer. Uh, what's a, what's a, what's a keyword that I used? Corporate? I use corporate. I'm searching my notes. I can send it to you right now. Got it. That's how you, that's how you find notes that you took a while ago. Do, do, uh, do words that you know you used. I found our, our found your machine washable text by typing in washable. Cause I know no one's going to use that. Yeah. Except when I clicked on it, cause I was going to take a screenshot. It was too far back. It's lost in the ether of text messages. But Mike asked me to write like a forward or something, something, a prelude for his book. It's like a little teaser. And I put... I met Mike when he was selling beanbags. As a social media kid trying to get free furniture, I had no idea that the marketing manager that I was texting would soon become my best friend, business partner, and roommate. See, most people fall in love with Mike's charisma and deceptive intelligence, but not me. I liked Mike because he was able to get me free, BBA, free beanbags. <laughs> However, as he continued to supply me with shredded memory foam stuffed inside a sack, I realized that the kid had a real spunk. As a spunkster myself, I enjoyed every second chopping it up with Mike. Conversations were effort, jovial, pragmatic. It was a blossoming love story akin to Brokeback Mountain without the gay sex. <laughs> Soon thereafter, I rescued Mike from his stable, secure, and lucrative corporate job in Connecticut <laughs> and brought him permanently into my fucked up life that is digital media. He quickly became the big brother I never had and never wanted. <laughs> There's many things I like about Mike. His ability to navigate through the shitstorm and come out victorious. His inter interpersonal communication skills. His humor. I've been lucky enough to experience the ripple effects of his unmatched energetic glow as he continues to make me the best version of myself. Mike is an invaluable and irreplaceable counterpart, but he's also a pussy. LP. <laughs> so I'm here to ask you why the fuck you left your job in Connecticut to join this bullshit and help me overcome a lot of hurdles in my life. Because I was not in a good place. As much as I like to pretend that I was, I was not. And that's why I can't even read that passage out loud. Because I, 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 I cannot, I cannot for the life of me, identify what I was thinking. 
if someone were to ask me during that time, why, why, why did you do this? I used to answer that question. Yeah. I used to, I, I used to go, man, it's, it's hard to say, but I imagine they, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer now. So, right. so again, I'll ask you for a third time and let you speak this time. <laughs> why Mike? No matter how bad my life got <clears throat> when I was doing the things that I was doing, there was always an, uh, a part of me that was filled with intense love and passion for other people. It, it, that was one thing that never went away. It never went away. Even, e even though I did things that counteracted that and contradicted that all the time I, and, and out of, out of self-preservation and desperation, I did horrible things, but I always had that part of me that just loved people. I truly, truly, truly love people. I love being friends with people. I love making their lives better that there's nothing that makes me feel better than that. And I'm, I've always been very good at it. I've always been good at helping people, giving advice to people, walking people through tough times. When I first met you and we became friends, it, it was a very noisy part of your life. There was a lot of people involved. Yeah. A lot of people. Some were great. Some were very fucking bad. When I came in, the one thing I knew for certain was which one of those people I was. And there was debate about it. There was debate from family members about it. There was debate about business people about it the whole time. But I knew more than anyone that the only reason I was doing the shit I was doing was because I I loved I already loved you and you were already a very good friend of mine. And I wanted you to get through whatever it was, whether it was the good or the bad. We were supposed to start working together and we were supposed to be counterparts prior to Tokyo. We were working on that. There was going to be this massive influencer arm of the Maverick business and I was going to take it over and I was already meeting with Jeff. Yeah, I, th I think it's a good spot, just benchmark, to yeah. say that you were never meant to be talent. You were meant to Absolutely be not. the head Business of talent. Side. Yes, The head of talent, of, of marketing, of yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then, as we know is in this book, a part that you don't want to read, and I can completely understand that, one of the most earth-shattering fucking moments happened. Yeah. And it was earth-shattering for me because it was my next step in life. And so when it when it happened to him, it happened to me too. Mm. And... Not, not more than a, a, a month or so after that, there was a follow-up, which demonetized your channel and created more havoc for you. Yeah, the rat. Which which was the rat. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know this, but I went bonkers. You went apeshit. I went apeshit on everybody. Your fan, on everybody. The, I, the, I'll give you some context here. Yeah, so yeah, after yeah. Tokyo happened, uh, I did the, the, the rat thing. Fuck. Ugh. I didn't send it to the review team that we had just put in place because Mike said to. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's one of the most uh, picture perfect definitions of self sabotage. Just yeah. like like I, I I didn't show the people who were put around me just because I was being a fuck ass, a villain. Yeah. Um, and you got so mad. You got so, so mad. I remember being on the flight from JFK and I was still on the runway to leave JFK to come back here because I was coming back here so often at that point. But I was still going back to love cycle. I was trying yep. to balance it. Yep. And I was I was fucking fuming. You motherfuckers. You did it again, Jeff. The other people that were on the team <laughs> I won't mention at this time that were part of the team and everybody didn't yell much at you, but I probably did. But that's a you, and, and, you did, you did. But but anyways, that was a that was like as I started to transition into the team. But the one thing that was always there was the belief that I was doing all of this because I genuinely cared about you as a person. And that was the reason. And, and there was never, there was always a, uh, you always, you, you still to this day have this filter. You know, what, why is this person doing this? You knew early that I was, that I was a mm -hmm. good person. Mm -hmm. You knew, you just knew. And that's why I, we still, we, it, it's, this is not in the book. So I guess there are a couple of things. Talk about, talk about the shrimp? The no, not the shrimp. Oh. <laughs> but sim similarly, the garage night where it the first time where it went yeah, down, yeah. The, one of the worst times yep. with the entire, with everybody. And we don't have to name names or anything, but you stood up to your own family members in my defense. About to throw hands. About to throw hands in a, in a fight that almost went down. And, and, um, I've, oh, I can say without question, without any thought whatsoever that I am a good person. I know that I was raised a good person. My mother hasn't put that in me. My grandmother, my father, everything about me, not everything. I have some down, some pitfalls, but at heart, I am a good person. And that is why I ended, that is why I said to, to your point, I know it's funny, but 
I knew that if I walked away from everything to, during a point that was not your br- best or brightest, it was going to work out. Mm. And I'm and I'm happy I did. And it was and, and it was too? and it was fucking horrible for a while. It was fucking tragic. Even with the um, <laughs> even with the, the the shrimp thing, like when Mike and I broke up for a week. <laughs> <laughs> My my conclusion was, and sometimes it takes me a bit to come to these conclusions, um, is that I've 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 never questioned Mike's intent, and and we talk about this a little, Andre. Just like uh, and Gary Vaynerchuk actually told me this after Tokyo. Intent does not always equal outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it doesn't matter what your intent is. It's execution. Right. Yeah. In this specific scenario, with you, it does. Because because I know like I know your intent is and always has been good, yeah. and so it was it was good for it was a good um I don't know I guess I'm just saying like yes I, I you you are a very good person yeah.